Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War, in which we're playing as the Falkorian Queendom with a historical uh, mode on, basically, or not historical. But we're going to begin with the ongoing crisis. The pressure from the radicals has reached a boiling point, and they demand change, otherwise they'll indicate or incite further unrest and potentially overthrow the rightful rule. The princess has chosen the following course of action. Falcor's most important and influential griffins will be invited to Matson residence, whereupon they'll decide the future of our nation. The nobility issue a vote of no confidence, though. The reign of Princess Maximilian, Maximiliana and Prince Consort Alberto has not been without issues. Although they worked heresy to preserve Falcor's borders, a growing number of extremists led by Gabriel de Artiglio, an old war veteran, has obstructed the government at every opportunity and threatened our peace. Combined with high amounts of poverty, illiteracy, and unemployment, many griffins in the nation, both lowborn and highborn, are believing D'Artiglio's rhetoric. As has culminated in the largest organized protest of eight, which lasted for a significant part of the previous month, Maton residents found itself under siege by the highly organized members of the Falkorian Eagles, although they did not attempt to fight the outnumbered royal guards. Thus, the High Council of Nobles is sensing the monarchy's weakness have formally issued a declaration of no confidence. However, this could not go through without the vote of the full council, which also includes notable captains of industry who were known to be supporters of Maximiliana. The princess could count on her own vote alongside her husband's, of course, but the outcome seems uncertain. This is a simple power grab, or D'Artiglio's scheme. He was known to court nobles who had estates near the wing body and bold in the end. As it was, Maximiliana has a majority's backing. Peace leaders all her woes. Council of nobles does not trust the princess. Oh boy. Oh, wow, but Peace is no longer. Oh, so that's like a supremacy route. Why Falcor matters. That's kind of cool. The last holdout. To kill a princess. Well, I'm not really sure what's historical here, so maybe I should have done historical. I probably should have done historical. Oh well, whatever. It's too late. Abrogate the shameful treaty. <clears throat> Invade the archipelago. Foul court above all. That's actually kind of cool. Or the faith restored. I kind of want to see what this route is like. Seems like maybe slightly more historical. Let's go with that. Majority backing. Faith restored. I apologize we're not going down the route you want us to take, but it is what it is. Ooh. Ooh. Enlightened feudalism with industrialization, but despite Artiglio's machinations, Falcor's most influential have given the monarchy one more chance. Pray that the princess is set fast and resolute enough to steer the listing ship that is our nation. Much remains to be done in order to drag Falcor out of the quagmire. Where is this speed stability? Ooh, you want political power? Oh, united we must stand. Oh, absolutely. Now is not the time for squabbles nor arguments. Falcorians must stand together to reclaim what is theirs. Every griffin, regardless of their political alignment or belief, must unite to have a chance of reclaiming our city and give the nation a way to resolve its problems. But we have the national spirits, enlightened feudalism, which is good for political power. Other stuff, not really. Oh, we have unyielding revanchism. We have to kill the Longbodians eventually, which would be good. We have a forlorn nation, which sucks. And we also have Falcor and enemy claws, which is not good. Yeah, we, we might need this. We might need this state. Actually, can we justify on them? Oh, we can't. I think we more will attention. We currently get almost one political power every single day, which is not bad. Trade with them. Borrow. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to borrow from them. Absolutely not. United, we must stand. Anything else here? Not too much. Military training would be nice, but don't have to do that. And the Emperor is dead. Mm, our beautiful city. Uh, the city of Falkor isn't just a heap of buildings connected by rows, it is a source of our culture, our national pride, and everything else that comes with it. Our older citizens fondly remember the days strolling through the market square, visiting the royal palace, and going to the local theater. Remind the griffins that we will return. Uh, that's not bad. Agriculture investments looks pretty good. And we do have a cup of coffee here as well. Oh! Civil war, huh? Low poverty. Ooh, we definitely need to go there too. Ooh. Lose political power, but... Mm, not bad. Not bad. Railways would be... Very com combating the illiteracy would be very good as well. University, research speed. Going down this route will be really good. And oh my goodness. Industrial modernization. Oh my goodness. Oh, the house divided. That saying has developed over the years. Uh, put two Falcorians in a room and you'll get three opinions. It's not a distant truth, rather, it seems that the divides permeate many aspects of Falcorian society. The primary conflict concerns itself with the legacy of the wing body and war and what came after it. Those who are loyal to the royal family would prefer a peaceful settlement above all else. In the absence of such, a strictly defensive war would suffice otherwise. Their arguments are based on the fact that Falcor has been greatly weakened and must focus inward up in order to have a chance. This, of course, does not endear them to the nationalist faction who view them as cowards and traitors. The Falcorian Eagles, under the leadership of Gabriel d'Artiglio, are the primary opposition to the monarchists. Veterans of the war and exiles from the lost territory, their staunch belief in the Falcorian superiority's borders on zealotry. They will get near the gear the nation for war above all else, consequences be darned, and lead us to either death or glory. Other movements are virtually unknown, save for the Falcorian syndicates, who receive little attention due to the lack of a working class. They are seen as a foreign 
probably witness influence who have no business in Falcor. Needless to say, this nation is going to remain independent in the near future. It will need to resolve its fractured society. We cannot falter again, of course. Mm, that's not. So we could use a, lo a lonely stand. Levy the militia, which is not terrible. Yeah, it's not bad at all. We hold eminence. More harmony. Forgive and forget. Imprison nationals. Whoa. Join the Carthinian Pact. Yeah, I don't think we can go down that way. Yeah. And look for allies. Staunch bovines, huh? We're probably going to go by ourselves, to be honest with you. Defiant to the end. That's not bad. Um, in all honesty, several divisions comprised of loyalists from across the board will be formed in a race for the upcoming struggle. Look at the militia. This is probably the way we're going to go, which would be good. Um, I want to start going down this way as well. <clears throat> I do like the construction speed, though. Let's get that first, maybe? Extra stability and war support would be very nice, though, to commence rebuilding efforts. Much of our nation lies underdeveloped and neglected. To give our citizens something to be happy about, we shall commence a project aimed to increase the amount of housing in Falcor. Hopefully, it'll get most of the Griffins out from the streets. Cool. And as much as I want to get these guys and start working on some army XP and stuff like that, because I don't know if we really need more defense or offense. I'm always a big proponent of organization. But, ooh, who's winning over here? Ah, National Liberation Council is not doing so well. Could have sent volunteers, but oh well. It's too late, whatever. Uh, I do want to get to partial mobilization. So, that's the next. That's my first goal. Actually, we getting more political power first. Pop your bigger heads. Not bad. Ooh, yep, yeah, my bad. I lied. Even more political power. All right, beautiful city. Beautiful. And awesome. What type of divisions do we have? Ooh, we're not making any. That's not good. Let's see. Twelve. Oh no, it's fourteen coming with. Well, at least it's not twelve. You guys are okay. Militia. There's some knights. All right. So that's interesting. The brief history of the Falconian War. The fates of the Falconi and Wingle Wingle body have been intertwined for centuries now. Thus, it was no surprise when the nations clashed after the Griffonian Empire collapsed. We're perfectly content to stay within our historical borders, but it was the Winged Bodians who shot first at Meranclawo. And we are forced to defend ourselves from this unwanted aggression. And yet, every griffin knows how the remainder turned out. The so-called Miracle Pumiva. We suspect Winged Bodians paid off unicorns for the job. The slaughter at Asbolia's force, the enemy at the gates of Falkor. Despite all these setbacks, we per persevered and learned about our mistakes. Falkor itself may be poor and underdeveloped, but in each of our hearts is a yearning desire to return home. Even if we all disagree on the method, we shall all share the same goal. Falcor should not be humiliated again. With the recent strap within the winged body comes an opportunity to secure its borders. The few general voices insist that we can make amends and peacefully resolve our woes, but the majority has no ear for that and gears for war. Falcor will be ours again one way or another. I I, I really want to start with this one. We need to get the we need an industry. And just just start beelining down through this stuff. It's gonna take a long time, but dissolve the feudal uh arch archaisms. Review that Falkorian army would be very good as well. Yeah. Falkorian Queendom has never been a particularly developed nation. But the loss of her prized capital has. <clears throat> Look at that. Fascist victory? Well, okay. Uh, but seemingly put any progress to a halt. To address the various issues that consider a nation, serfdom and teeth are to be abolished. And a more contemporary system emulating ones in Aquila and Griffenheim shall be established. By no means will it solve all of our problems, but it's a painful start, to say the least. Anything over here? Point nine. Artillery attack and defense is really good. Even infantry. That's really good as well. Because we'll be using a lot of infantry. Army regrouping recovery. It's not bad too. I want to get both of these. Well, but, ooh, I want to start here. But let's start working on getting some daily army speed. That's going to be the most important thing that we can get right now. Armor. but eh. So then we're going to go to early mobilization. Or partial mobilization. My bad. Cool. This is all the feudal anarchisms. Nice. Daring do book, very cool. Research speed, thank you. Oh crap. Oh. Well, that's not good. We're gonna need a bigger army then. New industrial base. Outside of Falcor, beyond a grasp, industrialization has been sporadic and uh, incomplete. Only pursued by those with any means to generate a profit, the government. We'll commence the funding of state sponsored factories to resolve the lack of jobs and goods, expand military workshops. The nation needs arms. The, certain, the only certainty of our future is that there will be strife, and we must be ready to protect ourselves. We might be weakened, but we will never yield as long as we can fight, and fight we shall. Implements of the modern age. Iron plows, rusted tools, broken pickaxes shall be a thing of the past. Truly bring our nation to an industrial revolution. We require three implements for workers. Only that way can they efficiently perform their duties. Although we do not have the means to produce such instruments, we are capable of importing them from the north. 
which will be super important as we will go ahead and go to partial mobilization hopefully very soon and uh, there you go, very cool. Increased living standard. Industrial forms have given their yield and the former serfs now breathe in the air freedom. Many now flock to the cities in search of a better life but the conditions are cramped and squalid. We should act before the problem exacerbates. Electronical ingenuity? Well, let's go with improving the process of production. Factory work is a novelty to many griffins, and a lot of our tools and machinery are dated and potentially hazardous. Investments should be made in the area to encourage our laborers to work harder with the contemporary building technology. Electronical ingenuity. Radios, computers, anything that runs on electrical power, very hard to find in the foul core of today. Lagging behind such inventions would be devastating for our nation, which is why we must make strides in importing these gadgets and reverse engineering them so that we can produce our own variants. Double the railway lines. Now, the current state of development, trains are the fast method for civilian transport, military redeployments, and moving goods around. However, our steam locomotives are slow and need to be replaced. Additionally, we shall look into building new railway lines for new trains, which will also use a different gauge compared to the Wingbardian ones in combating illiteracy, or illiteracy. Most Griffins pay no heed to books and knowledge, for their burdens are great and their time is precious and little. As such, a dedicated campaign towards teaching every Griff how to read and write will be funded. Employers will provide basic training, access to libraries will be improved, and will reach out to far-flung communities. Um, that's not bad. That's actually that's pretty good. Let's do industrial modernization first. It hurts our supply consumption by quite a bit. First steps towards uh, progress have been taken. The city of Manton has successfully impl implemented telegraph lines, electrical base machinery, and more. It would only be logical to extend these investments to the rest of Falcor so we may benefit all from novelty. We uh, benefit from yeah, benefit from novelty. An armed society would be pretty good. No, that's not bad. Ooh, mild poverty. That's even better. Greatness achieved. Wow. Wait, replace industrializing society with outdated one. Low poverty with mild poverty. A new pursuit for science. As well, Koreans slowly become more and more literate, new possibilities are opening. Higher degree schools can be opened. Jobs that don't involve heavy physical exertion are becoming commonplace. All this and more will ensure a place in the world as a nation of literate griffins. For some reason now, um, we're able to actually get some naval XP earlier. It just wasn't going, even though we were repairing and doing stuff here. But it's not like we have a massive navy, but it, it'll work for what we have for now. Uh, follow it up with what? Let's get some interception closer to the Ooh. Oh, Bob Doriano, Volator. Also, we did go to uh, limited conscription, so that's good. Organized fuel stuff. Nice. Good, good, good. Grab some of that too. Matson University. Princess Maximiliana has proudly announced the opening of the first higher learning institute in our nation, the Matson University. And provide our best and brightest citizens with a prospect of greater learning at the present moment. This facility will offer faculties in history, engineering, and mathematics. Very nice. So, even more daily from its carriers. It's very heavy on carriers. 15%. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, this one. Entrenchment. I mean, I don't know. Probably defense is probably the way to go. It's really probably the way to go for us. So, But we'll see. There's no guarantee yet. Do you have any planes? They have Alfonso. No planes. That's not good. We have 16 divisions, though. That's pretty decent. Not like these guys are superior or anything like that. They're not great. But we'll deal with whatever we can with. Nothing over there. Not too much. Hmm. So much like this one. Our regrouping. Recovery rate. That affects every division, so that's probably the way we'll go. But the university. Um, remove industrialization. Illiterate Falcor. Getting those research slots going to be super important. Compulsory and complementary. Education shall be the right of all Griffins dwelling in this nation, regardless of their position. It shall also be made mandatory for every Griffin, with no charge attached to it. The government will have to be covered, have to cover the cost, but it's the only way illiteracy can, of course, be eliminated, which is a good thing. Industrialization that'll get there better. Uh, Falcor enemy claws. We'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Oh, 17 divisions. Look at that. Nice. Super complexes. Grab that one too. Nice. Oh, that's not quite. Oh, we're almost there, but let's do some of this stuff too. Getting the extra user slot is going to be so crucial. Yeah, I'll wait to get this one. More daily army speeches. Uh oh. Oh, crap. Maybe not. Oh, crap. Um. Well, that's not good. Yeah, that's definitely not good. I don't think we're really ready for any sort of conflict, so I might have to do some funky stuff off screen to make sure we don't die immediately. So, uh, illiterate Falcor. All our efforts have paid off, and now almost every Falcorian is able to read and write. Illiteracy in the major cities has decreased under 1% for both adults and children. And even in the countryside, the rates don't go over 3%. The nation as a whole will benefit from our learned citizens. Feudalism abolished. All traces of first serfdom have been eliminated. 
and I already Corian lives as a free griffin. Farmers now own the land they work, and a majority of the population now lives in the bustling growing cities. Although the former elites bemoan the loss of their privileges, the nation as a whole has prospered as a result. Falcor stands tall as a modern nation, and Falcorian research laboratories. Well, we'll want to do this one eventually, but we'll see. Our scientists clamor for specialized facilities to perform experiments and research without being disturbed. While it's a great expense, they've shown promise that they can give them the results we needed, giving us a solid reason to fund these laboratories so that we may continue achieving new heights in science. In our society, uh, dangers lurk in the world, both fear nearby and distant. The only way a prophet Falcorian can preserve his freedom is with the weapon, and that requires expansion of our firearm facilities to ensure every griff, soldier, civilian is a way to fend themselves and invest in growing businesses. Encouraged by our reforms, many citizens have started their own small scale companies, and factory owners have increased their wages. With careful backing of select establishments, we can increase the rate of growth while maintaining a stable economy. A scholar's request. A famous scholar petitioned our government recently to aid him in his magical studies. He said he was planning to conduct an elaborate and expensive experiment to confirm his theories on magic and wouldn't be able to do it on his own. The experiment would be a risky one, but worth a reward if it were to succeed. While some claim this would be a misallocation of resources, it might be a gamble worth taking. The scholar in question is well known for his genius in math magical studies, and a breakthrough would provide us with all the valuable knowledge about the esoteric laws of magic. What's the worst that could happen? Catastrophic failure. After he granted the scholar everything he needs for his ambitious experiment, we didn't hear much from him, assuming he was busy with work. But earlier today, a large explosion rocked the capital, leaving, leveling dozens of houses and workshops around it. Unnatural blue fires, then spreading cause even more damage. It cannot be extinguished with water. One magical expert recognized the flames and told us to pour pure alcohol in them, which indeed worked and the flames were quenched. But the damage was already done and hundreds had perished. An initial investigation quickly revealed that the center of the explosion was in the laboratory of the scholar we had aided. It seems our magical experiment had disastrous consequences, and that everything we invested into it went up in blue flames. This is a disaster. Review the Falcorian army. We spent a large amount of soldiers ready to fight for Falcor, but the equipment and tactics were woefully outdated. Our primary our priority should be catching up with other military powers on the continent by any means necessary, and for done, Matt and Central Bank. As Griffin seek new lives in cities, they find themselves without a sufficient capital to live a decent life. To prevent them from falling prey to loan sharks, a Central Bank will be established. To regulate the loan giving, Serving as a gold repository and a regular occurrency, of course, banks will be regulated to ensure that interest rates uh, aren't crippling, which would be a good thing. Grab some of that, too. Uh, connect the countryside. Our initial campaign to expand the railways has been a success, which makes it only sens sensible that we expand these lines to smaller communities. No matter where Griffin is, he should be able to find a nearby transition to reach any city in our state. Thunderous applause. The tried and true methods are called such because they worked in any conditions, and that's our approach to warfare. The standard battle rifle, the Falcor and soldiers need modernization to keep up with the ever-changing struggles, as well as other equipment, grenades, and protection. Modernize ordnance. Artillery's progress has become deadlier, rifling, recoil mechanisms, and breech loading right loud for the barrage to continue without delay while maintaining accuracy. Our existing pieces should be brought to the latest standards, and a new design should be made to begin production in following years. Uh, shell after shell. Military thought adapts and evolves constantly to the changing aspect of warfare. World's revolution a decade ago is now but a note in history books, and new technologies can complicate the matter even further. Our strategies and tactics must reflect this reality. Sport equipment. War isn't just about shooting the other griffins, but prepared adequately for battle so that losses can be minimized and victory assured. This takes the form in the support battalions who do vital tasks such as recon, bridge building, hauling supplies, and maintaining heavy equipment. Ensuring your soldiers have the best equipment for such tasks can mean everything, and Falcor comes first. The crisis may have been avoided, but that does not change the situation at large. Nationals are pacifist. Every griffin wants to see your video to full city returned. The princess shall promise to her people the Fal Falcor shall be returned no matter the cost. So hope this will also calm the extremists down so they'll cooperate with us and modify radicals. Their volunteers' hearts are in a good place, but their methods are crude and we're only doing Falcor. However, we need them to support our campaign, which means a series of concessions will have to be given to that demagogue, Dartiglio. A compromise can and will be found. Ars Moriandi. The Falcorian War demonstrated that it would be foolish for us to count on any other nation to defend against winged body and aggression. Our so called allies may talk a good game, but when the time comes to meet the winged bodies in battle, they will, of course, abandon us. We cannot rely on any Griff else to save us, we ought to save ourselves. We must dig in and prepare to fight a defensive war. That is, this is Falcor's last stand. It is the greatest challenge we've ever faced. It will come in our darkest hour. But, and of course, if we are to survive, people will have, a pay to, have to pay a heavy price in blood. It may seem grim, but it's our only realistic path forward. Boreas, help us all. We won't go down without fighting. Or without a fight. Of course, we did a low one stand. Spurned by would-be allies, as winged body laughs at our protests. The Falcorian Queendom has little other options than to pursue its interests by war. The last of the dissatisfied extremist plot to topple the government. We shall all work together to achieve this gold or destroy what is rightfully ours and may Boris look after us. Levy the militias. Rally the soldiers, rally the veterans, rally every griffin. We cannot stand against the might of winged body and their allies in quality, but we can, what we can do is overwhelm them by numbers until a proper response is mustered. As long as every griff has a weapon, even a primitive one, we stand a chance of success. 
and coordinate with loyalists. Many griffins who have remained in the city of Falkor long for a return, but there's little they can do about it, as they are closely monitored. However, we should instigate a diversion which will allow these loyalists to cross the border and join our forces. Which would be very good as we... Well, we need to mobilize more men, as you can tell now that, uh... Some, going, some, some particular group is now justifying against us, which is not good. Uh, go ahead and get ready for the war. If this doesn't go well, I might have to do some funky stuff off-screen. But then again, we did prepare ourselves, hopefully, adequately enough thus far. Go and grab that, that'd be nice. And better already, that'd be pretty good too. I just hope we can hold out. That's my main concern, not being able to hold out. Of course, this is a river here. And do they have anything over there? Ooh, they're looking pretty thick as well. Our biggest thing is that we just don't have any manpower right now, which sucks. Or really any equipment at all, but... Which also sucks, but still. According with the Loyalists, I mean, that'd be good and all, but we don't think we can really do that yet. Of course, I did, do this, did read this one earlier, so if you're going to read this again, please go ahead. Shock and all might be the way we really want to go. So, utilizing rapid dominance tactics, we can impose an overwhelming level of shock and awe against an enemy quickly enough to paralyze their will to carry on. This will allow us to seek control of the environment and paralyze the enemy's participation or perceptions and understanding of events, leaving them incapable of organized resistance. Which is not bad. Right, so all that stuff is done. Let's come over here and do some of that, maybe. We got a lot of these guys already finished, which is pretty nice. Save our political power to get more manpower, of course. And how much longer until they go to war with us? Well, we're not entirely sure. They are alone, but still. And we can mobilize some more. Oh. I'll get that one. Um, shock and all. And then maybe coordinate with loyalists. Many griffins who remain in the city of Falkor long for a return, but there's little they can do about it, as they are closely monitored. However, we shall escape diversion, which will allow these lords to cross the board and join our forces. Conquest of Rice by Philip Redglad. A, a book written by Philip Redglad tells us a story about the struggles of the griffins of Prywin when as well as, as well as a new economic formation he was planning to institute Prywin. Philip Redglad critiques feudal societies most of the griffin nations possess. He proclaims the right of every creature for well-being and less working hours and that the main aim of a social state is technological innovation, which shall lead to automation, freeing the population from hard labor. The Communist Party, in a country obtaining a copy of the book, is now being published for everyone to read. Censor the book. It doesn't matter. Yeah, censor it. An offer from the Kingdom of Wing Body. After weeks of negotiations, the Kingdom of Wing Body has presented us with an ultimatum. Either we stand down our armies, allow Wing Body and officials to oversee all aspects of our government and accept the Wing Body and rules of law, or a state of war shall exist between us and the Kingdom of Wing Body. Huh, I wonder which one we're going to choose. Huh, well, alright. Well, we'll see. And by see, I mean, we kind of already know. I'm just waiting to get more mobilization done because we don't have a lot of pony power or griffin power. So one more time, and all right. Well, hopefully we make the right choice and say, uh, not today. The game will end for you, so it won't go down without a fight. And this might go really poorly for us. <sighs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. And they're over the river already, which does suck quite a lot for us. And they've already naval invaded us. I might have to redo some funky stuff off screen here. Because this is not going to go well for us. Yeah. This is... I wouldn't say super balanced, but at the same time, I'm not sure what else we could really do about it. So, we're going to do some more funky stuff off screen to see what we, else we can do. Um... And we'll do that one. Imperial training, probably. But Corrin's fight with enthusiasm and dedication, but that cannot replace proper training and drill. The old empire to the north is a plus of military advisors, and many of which would happily instruct our soldiers for a small compensation, and Maximiliana speaks. As we stand before this trial, greater than anything we've ever faced before, we must be ready and willing to fight on to the end. As we galvanize the nation for the struggle ahead, the princess's role will be essential. She is the voice of the nation and the fire of her conviction, and while we build the trenches and redoubts along the border, her voice will be the there to spur us on. A husband's reassurance. Princess Maximiliana did not always cherish the broad responsibility she was given. She was more than happy to act in her mother's stead, and she loved Falcor like every other country griff, but sometimes the burden became overbearing. Even the most wisest griffs would bemoan them to be in Falcor's situation, but Maximiliana did not intend to give up. As the princess paced in her study, her brooding was interrupted by a knock on the door. You may enter. It was none other than Alberto, her beloved husband, on many days. Maximiliano yearned for nothing more than his comforting embrace after a long day in court. It was what gave her the strength to persevere. Quail Mio, you have been in your chambers all day. Is there something giving you grief, he asked, removing his feathered hat. She always thought it looked ridiculous, but only Alberto made it look good. 
is nothing you should worry about. Merely the future of our nation. That is something we should both be concerned about, dearest. He was correct, but the princess hated the appearing weak for the longest long years of her rule. She even had she had to earn respect one difficult decision at a time. I'm merely contemplating if our choices are good for Falcor, Alberto. All we wish uh, we all wish to be grand again, yes, but the road is winding and uncertain. I can't let every gruff down. Maximiliano looked outside the window to the many gruffs milling outside on the street of Maton. For now, they are happy and safe, but for how long, though? The prince consort seemed imperious to her amaziatic, miasic doubt, slowly embracing his blood. If I knew one thing, Maximiliano, it's that you never let anything stand in your way. Anything. The fate threw at you, you stood your ground and came out on top. I know that the griffins I love will make the best choice. The princess has nothing to say except a few whispers or whimpers. Truly, she had the best spouse any griff could ask for. Thank you, Alberto. And to find to the end? Oh, yes, please. Our final attempts to negotiate a peaceful settlement have ended in a failure, and in Falcor is no choice left but to prepare for the eventual war. We lack the means to project our forts outside our borders, but that won't stop us to utilize all of our advantages to fight a protective uh, defensive battle. As to satisfy the radicals as well, who relish the thought of weak bardens dying at the walls, Falcor shall stand. Of course, we have that one still, and greatness achieved. From humble beginnings, we have achieved what no griff thought to be possible. The moderate, literate, and prosperous Falcor Princess Maximiliana's success shall be remembered for future generations, and her nation shall be, state shall persevere for ages to come. Shock and all. Utilizing rapid dominance tactics, we can impose an overwhelming level of shock and awe against an enemy quickly enough to paralyze their will to carry on. This allows us to seize control of the environment and paralyze the enemy's perceptions and understanding of events, leaving them incapable of organized resistance and motorized infantry. Motorization will greatly increase the strategic mobility of our infantry units, which would otherwise be forced to rely on arduous marches or railroads. Motorized infantry will have an advantage in agility, allowing them to move to critical sectors of the battlefield faster, allowing better response to enemy movements and the ability to outmaneuver the enemy. Princess Maximiliana's grand speech. We stand at a crossroads where the avarice of our neighbors threatens to fatally undermine our kingdom. We must regard the next few years as the most important period in our history. I've witnessed Falcor suffer setbacks in my lifetime, but I've never once seen reason to lose faith in the indomitable spirit of the Falcorian nation. If any malicious invaders intend to take what is ours, I am certain that our brave griffins will make them pay dearly for every inch they gain. I take our every ounce of our resolve, but this is a time for every griff to stand together and hold firm. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long years of struggle and suffering. You ask, what is our policy? I say. It is to wage war by sea, land, and air with all of our might and with all the strength that, that Boreas can give us to wage war against a monstrous tyranny. That is our policy, you ask. What is our aim? I answer that in one word. A victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory there is no survival. Let this be our final hour. The might of Falcor. We now stand as a great power in the region. Our forests are disciplined and well-equipped, and the number of recruits has exceeded many recruiters' quotas. Let arrivals know that Falcor is not to be trifled with, and will defend our freedoms the last griffin. Cost-saving designs. Chief does not have to be in crew. With sufficient experimentation and funding, our farms can be made easier and quicker to produce. As the forests are increasing at a steady pace, this investment should resolve the issue of inadequate and missing equipment. Of course, we're that one. Or that one. Um, I'm going to spend a little more time with this, see what else we can do about this, just because this is not going great for us. And obviously, we, we probably honestly should be end up dying, but I don't want to lose in this campaign already, so we'll do some slightly funky stuff off screen to make sure that we don't completely die completely that, that fast, but take to the skies. And the ages passed, valiant griffins would engage each other in spectacular sky battles, where bravery and steel decided the outcome. Such duels are not only ceremonial, but the invention of the airplane could bring them back to a more modern approach. However, it should be placed in formatting or forming a contemporary air force, construct airstrips. First step towards forming our air force shall be the construction of hangars and airstrips. Suitable sites for far away from urban centers where there is no risk of civilian involvement have been located and improved. Once they're completed, we can start the recruitment drive, study aerial warfare. There is not enough for pilots to know how to fly a plane, although it's a good start, but also understanding the role. Only with quick thinking and keen sense of strategy can they perform to the fullest potential and our training program should reflect this. Silver Falcons. Merge of Crows. Well, I did go with Cass, so we got to go with fi Silver Falcons. Quick nimble now, Joe. Our Air Force shall be based around utilizing the most out of the fighter planes. Our dated design inherited from the Fallen Empire shall be modernized to have larger firepower and maximum operational distance. First, finally, to still sense of patriotism, our new plans will be painted in the Falcorian colors. Black Eagles. Our existing fighters cannot be equipped with heavy weaponry without sacrificing their speed and mobility as such. We shall adapt a bomber chassis, a twin-engine multi-plane, uh, or multi-place, crew airplane to instead of carry arms intended to fight the bombers and fighters, this will secure control of the skies. Integration of the land air battle. Our airplanes and the firepower should be bound to perform in tandem with the ground forces. As our nimble fighters engage the enemy's planes, the close air support will swoop in, devastating the fortifications and formations. This shall be a strategy in regards to the growing importance of sky control. Praying Hawks. Although conventional fires are capable of assaulting ground-based targets, it's a very risky and inefficient procedure that does more harm than good. As such, a modified or a modifier fighter plane that can perform dive-bombing operations directly supporting our troops in the field is required. Optimize battlefield support. 
No plan survives first contact with the enemy. But we can prepare our pilots for anything they might face. A strict regimen of flying exercise and additional course will ensure that the fly aggressors are always ready and acknowledgeable. Peace is our profession. War is not our preference, but our place in the world demands that we need to be ready for anything. Our advancements in aerial development, combined with the enthusiasm Griffin show for joining the Air Force to convince us that the further investment and expansion of our aircraft designers is worth it, or worthwhile. But if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we all continue struggling with the Carthunian Pack. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.